In Mark chapter 10, we see the assurance of something many Christians don't like to talk about, and that is the assurance that pastors will also prosper in life. It seems the Christians want their pastors to be poor and holy, not necessarily spiritually holy, but holy shoes and holy pants and everything else. But that's not God's plan. I want to show you something here today. As Jesus finishes with the rich young ruler, <laughs> and the rich young ruler is a story in itself, a man who, who could have had everything he ever dreamed of and more. Jesus said, sell all you've got, give it to the poor, and come follow me. You want eternal life? You want an experiential knowledge of God and an experiential knowledge of his son, of the Messiah? Come follow me. He could have had his dream. He could have been one of the 12. But he was so tied to his money. And the disciples follow up all of that by saying, Peter, verse 28, we've given up everything to follow you. And they had. They, they'd given up everything to follow him. But Jesus looks at him and says, yes, you have given up everything to follow me. Jesus said, yes, you have. Okay, I agree with you, Peter. You've given up everything to follow me. And I assure you that everyone, not, not a few, not a select group, everyone who has given up house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or property for my sake and for the good news will receive now in return a hundred times as many houses, properties, sisters, mothers, children, and property along with persecution. And in the world to come, that person will have eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. Now, brothers, I want you to notice something. Prosperity for pastors is assured. There are many people, they, they, they're like the rich young ruler. They, they don't want to go into the ministry because they want the BGC lifestyle. They want what we used to call the Makati lifestyle. And somehow they've come to think that the ministry means poverty because that's how the world wants the ministry to be portrayed. Many years ago, a man walked up to me and he said, Pastor Summer, you don't, you don't act like a spiritual man because, you know, you're, you're, not, you're not a beggar. You're not poor. I said, I'm not a Buddhist monk. I don't walk around with a bowl begging. So that, that's not the life that God has called us to. Jesus looked at the twelve and said, I assure you, everyone, every single person who has sacrificed to follow the call to the ministry will receive in this life a hundredfold return. So again, what we receive is measured by the sacrifice that we put out. But the sacrifice cannot be for position. The sacrifice cannot be for, for fame or fortune. The sacrifice has to be for the sake of Jesus and for the sake of the gospel. And when that sacrifice is made for the sake of Jesus and for the sake of the gospel, they reap a hundredfold return of what they have sowed. Now, I look at my life and I go, well, maybe I was one of these guys, the first should be last and the last should be first, okay? Maybe I'm one of these guys that gets it last because we went for so many years with nothing. But I, I live a very blessed life now, and I make no apologies of it. Now, at some point, we have to understand, if people are going to follow the call to the ministry, the entrance to the call requires sacrifice. And you will sacrifice businesses. You will sacrifice financial fortunes. You will sacrifice inheritances. You will sacrifice land and properties. You will sacrifice. But in this life, there will be a hundredfold return. And then verse 30 says, with persecution. <laughs> Nobody persecutes a poor pastor. But oh, do they love to persecute a pastor who has received the hundredfold return.